Wes Craven's new nightmare. Has Heather Langenkamp having nightmares, and in order to finally stop Freddy, she must become Nancy Thompson one last time and defeat Freddy once and for all. I know I didn't get this review done last weekend, so I'll do it tonight and then tomorrow. I will also do Freddy vs. Jason review stuff. So, here we go. So the positives of the film are, I love it that the movie takes the franchise back to its horror roots. Uh, it's easily the scariest since part three. Uh, so I really like that. I like it that there's no goofy tone in the movie anymore. I love Freddy's redesign. Uh, the muscle uh, head, like like a skinned type of head, that looks pretty cool. I love the new bladed glove, um, where he has, um, uh, knives on all of his fingers, including his thumb. That's really cool. The trench coat, uh, is really cool. I like that. I also like the green, uh, fedora. So, the Freddy in this is really cool. I like his design, and, uh, I like it that he's scary again. The metatone in the movie is cool. Uh, I loved seeing Heather Langenkamp play herself. I like seeing Robert England out of the Freddy makeup. Uh, and it's cool to see John Saxon and Wes Craven and and uh, Robert Shea in the movie. Those those cameos, those uh, them playing themselves are really cool. And the last positive is the last 20 minutes is great. It starts with Heather trying to save Dylan on the highway, and then and that was was really tense. Then I love the whole underworld Freddy world. It's an epic finale to the Elm Street franchise, or at least of the Nancy Thompson trilogy. So, uh, the ending, the final battle is really good, tense scary, and engaging. That's it for positives. On to the negatives. Um, honestly, I don't think this movie is that scary or that atmospheric. Um, uh, now, although it tries to be scary, it it is easily scarier than parts 4, 5, and Freddy's Dead. Easily. Um, but... To be honest, I feel like this movie is kind of bland. Uh, the f uh, the first three films uh, felt dark, scary, and had a certain feel to them. This doesn't really feel like a horror movie until, like, the last 20 minutes. Um, and I guess uh, a part of that is because... Another negative is because there's... Not a lot of Freddy in the film. He doesn't show up until the last 20 minutes. And I prefer to have Freddy throughout the runtime of the movie. Um, now, although people are dying in the film, all you see is maybe, like, his uh, bladed hand or... Uh, or, like, just, just like his shadow. Um, so you don't really see Freddy... Uh, or technically the Freddy entity. Entity is taken the form of Freddy. You technically don't see the Freddy entity until like the last 20 minutes. And then the last negative is there's not really any memorable kills. The kills are either the same as others, like uh, Chase where he gets killed in the car that's kind of reminiscent of Dan from Part 5, or Julie, who gets dragged up the wall and stabbed, uh, just like uh, just like Tina in the original. Or the kills are not creative, like Chuck and Terry, who who uh, just get stabbed in the chest with the glove. So the kills they're not creative. They're not. They're not. They, like, they're either bland kills or they're referencing other movies. So, kills really aren't that good in the the movie. 
Um, but that's about it for negatives. Uh, in the end, it's a good movie. It's just a little slow for the first two-thirds, and it's not a very good slasher movie, but the last 20 minutes is thrilling, scary, and awesome. So that's my review on Wes Craven's New Nightmare. I think it is a pretty good film. Thanks for watching.